So, Graham, uh, thank you for making it through the Zoom maze. OK, thanks for having <laughs> um, me. Um, and please, we look, look forward to your talk. I think you're going to be talking about contamination. Contamin yes, farm. yes. Yeah. Right. Thanks for having me. And it's all rather depressing uh, listening to a lot of the previous speakers. And uh, I'm not going to be any less uh, depressing, unfortunately. And there's one common denominator, unfortunately, I think, through it all. And that's the human. And we're going to find out a lot more now um, about a serious issue that's getting worse by the year. So let me give you a little bit of a background on this. I've been a, a detectorist of all things for oh, long, as long as I can remember. Ever since I was a child, I was fascinated by finding ancient objects that were lost over the years and over the centuries. Uh, and that childhood passion followed me right through my adult uh, life and right where I am now. Um, so I own a company called Unearthed UK Limited, and we sell metal detecting equipment to the hobby side of, of it all. And we also do tuition, and we also do something called Unearthed Organised Digs, where we unearth history of farmers and landowners fields and farms in the, in the surrounding area, which is all rather interesting because obviously people that own land um, are always quite keen on uh, finding out the history of their particular patch. And we do that very well. We save coins and artifacts from agricultural destruction through modern farming techniques. And we also bring them back to life and show people them, museums, um, you name it, it's just a fantastic hobby. Uh, and we, we work with many, many farmers here in Cumbria and further afield into Lancashire, Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, Norfolk, Suffolk and beyond. So we have a wide network of farmers that we visit from time to time. And uh, it's hugely enjoyable, as you, can, as you can imagine. However, it's all not rosy in the garden. And I would say probably about 15 years ago or more, we started noticing while we were out in the fields, uh, levels of metallic waste being distributed uh, within the plough soil. Now, at first, we thought it might have been just farmers spreading farm waste onto fields. And of course, our metal detectors used to go balmy, uh, uncovering these high levels of metallic waste. I'm sorry to say that this problem now has become such an issue that I would probably put it alongside the plastics in the sea problem. Now, just for one minute, just have a think about how big that is. So we are now finding more and more metallic waste coming into farmland, being buried on acreage, farmers' fields, landowners' lovely, lush pasture and plough. And the only people that actually see this is us. We're the ones out with our metal detectors, enjoying a nice day in the fresh air, and sometimes coming back with huge pockets of metallic waste. Now, this metallic waste can be anything from batteries, door hinges, latches, aluminium in huge amounts. It can be hypodermic needles. We're also finding lots of plastic on the surface, rubber, screws, the list chipboard. MDF, even sometimes we've even found asbestos mixed in. Now, it's loosely claimed that this is classed as green waste. Now, if I give you a definition of green waste, uh, let me just read it out for you. It's anything but what green waste, the definition of what green waste is. So green waste is anything from like grass, grass clipping, shrub and yard clippings, branches, wood chip, bark, um, you know, branches of trees and weeds. That's what the definition of green waste is. What we're finding is anything but green waste. We're classing it as toxic metallic waste, and it's coming out in huge, it's coming up onto farmers' fields in huge amounts. Now, some time ago, I did a little bit of a survey to find out just where this metallic waste was being spread. And we found, we found a lot of farms in the Cumbria in the Lake District, on the outer fringes of the National Park and the Lake District, there's farms there with huge amounts of this metallic, horrendous metallic waste being spread. And we've also found through our network of detectorists that this is being 
Uh, this is also happening, I should say, in Lancashire, Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, Norfolk, Suffolk, Essex, Sussex, Wiltshire, Cornwall, Devon, North Wales, Northumberland, Scotland. The only places we're not familiar with it or we're not aware at the moment is the Isle of Man and Ireland, but I'm pretty sure it is in Ireland. We've got nobody come forward yet and tell, telling us that it's actually uh, on the Isle of Man. Now, if we do a conservative estimate of how much of this metallic waste could be spread on farmers' fields, um, we've come up with um, a number. We think it's about a quarter of a million acres now has been, have been ruined by metallic waste. Now, the problem we've got here is when you drive past your fields, you drive past farms and the lovely crops are growing or the pastures growing up and animals are grazing on the pasture like we have on our, our own patch. Um, we can't see this metallic waste, but when they plough a field, for example, with metallic waste on and the sun decides to shine for that particular day, you can see large amounts of this horrible aluminium glistening across the top of the fields and it's completely unacceptable that this has been allowed to happen. It's almost like, uh, you know, landfill on farmers' fields. It's just so wrong. When you approach the farmers, a lot of them don't know it's on. So it's coming from the contractors that are saying that they're bringing in fertilizers and compost. We think it's coming in through that route. I did a film. I was quite passionate about it at the time. Going back February this year, we were introduced to a new farm here in Cumbria near Carlisle. And quite a historic area, and the farmer was quite interested in uncovering the history of his land. So we ventured out one February morning, quite cold and damp, and there was a couple of us just testing the fields, air for green waste or metallic waste, because it's a waste of time us bringing a small group of avid detectorists along to uncover history when it's full of metallic waste. And lo and behold, the first field that we ventured on, unfortunately, was full of metallic waste. But this is where it gets interesting. It was only the day before we arrived that agricultural and commercial vehicles had been on the ground and on the land spreading this horrendous amount of metallic waste. I did a short film and I put it on my YouTube channel to raise awareness of this issue. And if you want to have a look at it, you're more than welcome. You just type into YouTube Unearthed UK. You'll search through the videos, go back five or six videos, and you'll see the heading waste, um, metallic waste. And there's a couple of videos that I've done recently showing the same amount of metallic waste being mixed in with farmers' crops and on top of animals, where, on top of grazing where animals are feeding. Now, um, what do we do about it? I've raised it with the Environment Agency. They weren't really interested, the Environment Agency. I have to say they were rather... I felt rather let down by the Environment Agency. They were sort of saying, well, there's a, you know, there's a small percentage of, of, this, um, of this matter, as he, they called it, allowed onto fields. A very small percentage is OK. Um, and then we went to the Green Party, and the Green Party already had a campaign going on with the plastics in the sea, so they couldn't really uh, help. And the Friends of the Earth were the same. They sort of sat on the fence a little bit. And then you start losing the places to go and talk about this horrendous situation. And again, it's only us detectorists that really know about it there because our machines find it. Um, it's anything but green waste. And we're even now finding it, curiously, uh, which is obviously a slightly separate issue, but we're actually finding it washed up on beaches now. And we don't know why. We don't know where it's coming from, um, from the sea and the beaches, but we are going to be doing some filming um, hopefully, hopefully with the BBC and Country File, they're quite interested in this um, horrendous situation that we found ourselves in. And um, we're going to be doing some beach work where we uncover large amounts of this aluminium, malted aluminium is being washed up on the beaches now. And we don't know where that's coming from. Um, the, the, both situations with the land and sea are dire, in my, in my opinion. People, farmers are growing crops uh, for human consumption, food in amongst this metallic waste. That cannot be good. For, for our health. Um, aluminium, as people know, has probably got links to di uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and all host of different uh, ailments and illnesses. Um, and it cannot be right that we're grazing animals on pasture on top of this horrendous green waste. So some farmers are actually spreading it on top of pasture fields, huge amounts of aluminium, all shredded up, 
and they're just waiting for the grass to grow and then they're putting the sheep or cattle on to graze on top of it and eventually the sheep and cattle will with their uh, feet will bed this down into the land so people can't see it but we know it's just under the surface so this um invite to do this uh, webinar for me is pretty much about awareness raising um you know there's not enough people out there that are aware of it the biggest problem i've got as well is the farmers themselves like i said earlier a lot of farmers don't know it's on they think it's compost and fertilizers that are coming in to be spread on the land and then they're finding out in horror that huge amounts of aluminium are mixed in the biggest issue they're going to have is how do they get rid of it it's almost impossible to remove these levels of aluminium and toxic waste on the land we could put a team of avid metal detectorists up a huge line of us 50 to 60 strong on some of these huge fields in places like lincolnshire norfolk and suffolk for example and it would take us weeks and weeks to pick it all out it'd be it'd be a tremendous amount of work but what's the alternative just leave it it takes centuries countless centuries for aluminium to rot down into the soil so we've got a big problem we've got a big big problem so this webinar for me is all about awareness raising if people want any more information they can contact me be uh, via my email which is unearthedUK at gmail.com just drop me an email if you want to know more information about it like i said earlier the bbc have been on to me this week at country file they're wanting to do a piece on it but we've got a We've got to venture into it very, very carefully. We don't want to be upsetting farmers that don't know it on. We don't want to be getting people into trouble that don't know it's on their land. But equally, we do need to know where this is coming from and put a stop to it pretty quick. Like I said, we think it's we think it's a quarter of a million acres already that this stuff's been spread on. There's that many farms up and down the UK with it on. It's absolutely horrendous. So any questions at the end, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, but yeah, what a, what a dire situation we found ourselves in.